Chapter 21. The Oracle Concerning the Wilderness of the Sea As windstorms in the Negev sweep on, it comes from the wilderness, from a terrifying land. Here Isaiah is providing some insight from God on Babylon, who was known as the wilderness of the sea because the great plain of Babylon was divided with lakes and marshes, so it was referred to as a sea. Like the passing of the desert winds, so would be the overthrow of Babylon. Verse 2. A harsh vision has been shown to me. The treacherous one still deals treacherously, and the destroyer still destroys. Go up, Elam, lay siege, Medea. I have made an end of all the groaning she has caused. The Elamites and Medes were part of the Persian army that defeated Babylon in 539 BC. Verse 3. For this reason my loins are full of anguish. Pains have seized me like the pains of a woman in labor. I am so bewildered I cannot hear, so terrified I cannot see. What was about to unfold physically affected Isaiah because of the severity of what he saw. Verse 4. My mind reels. Horror overwhelms me. The twilight I longed for has been turned from me into trembling. They set the table, they spread out the cloth, they eat, they drink. Rise up, captains, oil the shields. For thus the Lord says to me, go, station the lookout, let him report what he sees. So God had put a watchman on the city walls to relay messages. Verse 7. When he sees riders, horsemen in Paris, a train of donkeys, a train of camels, let him pay close attention, very close attention. Then the lookout called, O Lord, I stand continually by day on the watchtower, and I am stationed every night at my guard post. Now behold, here comes a troop of riders, horsemen in Paris. And one said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon, and all the images of her gods are shattered on the ground. O my threshold people, and my afflicted of the threshing floor, what I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I make known to you. These verses have immediate and future implications. The terror the people of Babylon felt during the city's destruction will be seen again when the Lord strikes the world system, defeating spiritual Babylon referenced in Revelation chapter 18, and God's people will rejoice. Verse 11, the oracle concerning Edom. One keeps calling to me from Seir. Watchman, how far gone is the night? Watchman, how far gone is the night? The watchman says, morning comes, but also night. If you would inquire, inquire, come back again. The oracle about Arabia. In the thickets of Arabia, you must spend the night, O caravans of the Dedanites. Bring water for the thirsty, O inhabitants of the land of Tima. Meet the fugitive with bread. For they have fled from the swords, from the drawn sword, and from the bent bow, and from the press of battle. For thus the Lord said to me, in a year, as a hired man would count it, all the splendor of Kedar will terminate, and the remainder of the number of bowmen, the mighty men of the sons of Kedar, will be few. For the Lord God of Israel has spoken. And this prophecy anticipated the conquest of the region by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which was mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 49. So we continue to see God's involvement and intervention with the nations. All right. Today's hymn to reflect upon in prayer is Jesus Savior Pilot Me by Edward Hopper. Hopper was inspired to write this by the event in scripture of Jesus calming the storm. Jesus Savior Pilot Me over life's tempestuous sea. Unknown waves before me roll, hiding rocks and treacherous shoal. Chart and compass come from thee, Jesus Savior Pilot Me. As a mother steals her child, thou canst hush the ocean wild. Boisterous waves obey thy will, when thou sayest to them, be still. Wondrous sovereign of the sea, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. When at last I near the shore, and the uh, fearful breakers roar, twixt me and the peaceful rest, then, while leaning on thy breast, may I hear thee say to me, fear not, I will pilot thee. Dear Lord, we are grateful for this life, and more so for the one to come. Though we arise each morning into days uncertain, help us to remember our calling. Please deepen our compassion for the fate of the unsaved and hopeless. In their state of despair and fear, allow us to be beacons of hope and joy with your message of good news. Help each of us never to lose sight of the glorious hope before us. Father, thank you that the mercy you give us in Jesus is new every day. Rest our souls and keep peace in our hearts. When anxiety and fear tries to prod at us, Prompt us to turn to you in prayer and cast the enemy away. 
Forgive us, Lord, for our sins against you this week. We do continue collectively praying for all the difficulties of this world, including those under severe threat, persecution, and suffering. Yet again, please do not let evil have victory over us, causing us to live in paralyzing stress and panic. Instead, let us trust in your plan and rely on your sovereignty and will. Keep our focus on the blessed hope of the trumpet sound that will lift us home. We also ask that you would take action against all involved in leading the evil schemes and agendas in this world. Please swiftly take action, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. All right. Well, let's go out there and be uh, beacons and light and hope and uh, bring the good news, the good message to those who need it. God bless your day and take care.